Hello and welcome, welcome to the live stream. Um, little watch long for Swan Away. Get some score predictions going down in the chat. Let me know your thoughts on the lineup as well. Uh, I just got to put the tweet out and hopefully we get a few more people join. <clears throat> what do we What do we think about uh, Taylor Gardner Hickman making his debut? Well, full debut. Two one win from Annie. I'm happy with that. I'd take that. I think we need to um I just want to see a score, quite frankly. Would be uh would be nice. Let's see what Twitter's saying. <clears throat> Thinking a one-all draw, very excited to see how Garden Hickman gets on. I am as well. I think. I mean, he looked good from what I've from what I've heard against uh, against Hull when he came on, and he scored the winner, I believe. But it was uh, it was blocked, unfortunately. Um, but one, I mean, one-all wouldn't be too bad, I suppose. I think we we need to get a win though. Which Twitter are confident about to put a poll out? Fifty-three percent think we're going to win. Twenty-two percent think we're going to draw. Twenty-three percent think Swansea are going to win, which is off a uh, one hundred and forty-seven votes. So a decent sample size, I suppose. But um, I, I think 2-0. Two 2-0 nil. Two nil or 1-0. I'm surprised Will George was dropped with how consistent he was. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but he was also absolutely abysmal on, um, on was it Tuesday? Wednesday, Tuesday? In the Cup against Norwich, he had an absolute shocker. I can't remember who was playing on the wing for Norwich, but he absolutely tore Tanner a new one. For dropping Dickies a little bit odd. Um, I mean, he hasn't looked overly comfortable for me on the left side of defence, but I'd rather have Naismith in midfield over Williams, perhaps, but I don't know. I guess Naismith does give us that little bit more um, assurance playing out from the back at points now that he's, he's simplified his game rather than trying to do all the fancy bits and pieces, um, which he was doing last year, like Blackpool, where he did that weird outside of foot pass uh, and it, it, it cost us the, um, the win up there. Placetta, yeah, Placetta did, yeah. He turned turn, turn jaw on the inside, and then, um, and then, yeah, I think he was up against Dickey when he, when he turned and shot, from what I remember. What is this? Lee Johnson pops up in some weird places on Twitter. I'm not actually sure where that is, but some City fans have found him. Just do the arch sack by Hibs in the week, didn't he? Um, I don't want to know where this is. I don't know. No idea. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm somewhat confident. I mean, Swansea have been pretty poor so far, haven't they? But whether or not we can um continue to make them look poor, who knows? Because uh, that doesn't tend to be our strong suit, unfortunately. Lee Johnson back at the end of the season. Could you imagine the outrage? I, I I love Lee Johnson. I appreciate the um the ending. It, it wasn't great, was it? Towards the end of that season, but why can I not just watch the thing I pay for? There we go. Um, did we lose? Did we lose to Swansea? Like, yeah, we lost there in the league, didn't we? I didn't go, but we lost there in the league. We beat them in the cup. Obviously, drew with them both times at Ashton Gate in the cup and the league. But they're just showing the, the Sam Bell winner from the cup. Uh, replay on Robin's TV now. <coughs> Bell starting again today, I suppose that makes sense. Mometi and Cornick dropped is understandable as well, I guess. They've been um, pretty dire in, in recent games. But, um, yeah, I suppose we wait and see how we how we get on. Where else one, how else ones he actually started the, the season? I can't remember. I did look at all of this before coming on, but it's uh, it's gone in one ear and out the other from the looks of it. Swansea haven't won yet. Okay, they've drawn twice, lost twice. Who with? Lost to Bournemouth in the Cup, lost to Preston, drew with... They lost to West Brom. West Brom are poor. Drew with Birmingham. I suppose it's better than us, isn't it? And Coventry. Okay, so they haven't lost at home yet. Drawn both their home games, one all, only lost away. I suppose they lost at home in the cup on Tuesday. Don't really count that. 
Um, that's the South Wales Derby next week. Who on earth has decided to put that on at 7.45 on a Saturday? Feels like a questionable idea, but oh well. I suppose it's not even... That's next next month, 28th of October. We've got to go to Cardiff, isn't it? So do with a win in that, because um, that was dire last year when we went there. That was absolutely abysmal. But um, that'll be fun, I'm sure, as always. Mimetti needs a few 90 minutes under his belt, otherwise he'll never improve. But I also get the fact that Sambo is better at the moment. Can't keep... Oh, it's disappeared from my thing. Can't keep giving Alice Mimetti moments off the bench. I mean, he's been... He's been um, he's been starting recently. It's just that he's been poor when he has started. Like, he was shocking against Birmingham. Pretty poor against Norwich in the week. I didn't watch this against Hull because I couldn't, couldn't watch it on Robin's TV or anything. Um... So, I wouldn't say he's awful. He's de there's definitely like a good player in there, um, which we've seen. My dog's going me mental. Sorry about that. Which we've seen at points, but those those flashes of brilliance are becoming less frequent now, which is concerning. Um, I think everybody kind of hoped they would, would become more frequent following a full preseason, etc., with the club. Um, but it doesn't seem to have worked out that way just yet. A cornick is. A weird one, because um, well, it was oh, it was just an odd signing, wasn't it? It was a very odd signing. It was like not even a panic buy. It was just like hysteria. Um, yeah, wasn't a fan of that, and still, I'm not particularly. But um, yeah, I mean, he's he's does all right at points, I guess, but it's kind of. There, like he's there for long throws at the moment, really, isn't he? So it's not ideal. But kickoff only five minutes away now. If you haven't already put a prediction in the chat, do that because, well, who knows? The winner winner will get a shout out in the uh, in the video that I'm making alongside this, which is basically probably a few clips from the stream. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. If I can actually work out how to make the clips, never really done it before. Haven't done a, long, a live stream on here for years now, but. If this form continues, do you reckon Pearson goes? Pearson will go at the end of the season either way, because um, obviously his contract's up, and quite frankly, I don't think he wants to be here. So probably not. I think the earliest we see Pearson go is Christmas, um, but I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if he got sacked at any point. I think the closest he would have come to getting sacked was was that run of form. Uh, sort of October to December sort of time last year before we went on the nice unbeaten run. Um, but I think there's potential he walks because he doesn't seem overly happy uh, at the moment from what we've seen in, in, um, in press interviews and what have you uh, around the, the end of the transfer window with, with the Scott money not really being made available to him, which partially is due to financial fair play stuff and then partially appears to be down to um, the restrictions that Steve Lansdowne, John Lansdowne, whoever it may be, has um, has imposed themselves, which is equally understandable because they pumped a load of money in and we didn't do anything with it in the end. Every press conference, Pearson does seem to be getting more and more frustrated. I agree. Uh, no way he'll get sacked. More likely he walks if we stagnate in the bottom half. Exactly, I agree. Because um, he's not being given the the resources to actually improve this squad, unfortunately. And he's, you know, hat goes off to him. He's done, as far as we know anyway, from the outside looking in, He's done everything that was asked of him, and arguably more. Um, you know, he's taken a a squad full of overpaid old people who were floundering and nearly getting well on course to get relegated when Dean Holden was sacked, and turned us into a, a squad with assets worth millions. Like you know, Alex Scott was was nowhere to be seen. Under Dean Holden um, came in towards the end of that season with Pearson, and then obviously flourished since and we've now sold him for 25 million which is what our biggest sale in god knows how long um was webster more than that i don't think he was from memory he was what 20 15 20 um oh they're just showing the little highlights package from like that they do before the game and i didn't realize they changed it but the um the Vyman goal against blackpool was in there from last season that was a beauty 
But um, yeah, Pearson, he won't get sacked. There's there's no chance that happens. I think, like I said, if he was going to get sacked, it would have been that run of form we went on. Webster was twenty two million. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, Lloyd Kelly didn't sign for Spurs in the end, did he? which is a bit of annoyance. Um, not that we'd have been able to do anything with the money on such short notice anyway, but it would have been nice to have the um, have the money put in the bank for for January, I suppose, in case it's needed. You know, for all those all those transfers that they're going to hopefully let Pearson make. Um, if you know, if if we had unlimited funds available, um, I think we're probably three players short. Maybe need. I think we could have done with a better backup keeper. I think Max is definitely number one. Um, I don't think we needed a, need someone to come in over Max, but I think we need somebody better than Badic as a as an option for if Max goes on a poor run of form or gets injured or whatever. Because uh, that was always our strong suit was if Bentley was injured or or got out of form or whatever like he did at points, then O'Leary could step in and and take that place and do it brilliantly. Um, so I think we probably could have done with that. Could have done with another centre half probably, which we've already seen this season. As soon as Dicky got suspended and obviously McCrory's out injured, which cash was Michael available on a free. Could you imagine? It'd be incredible. Their players are coming out now. Captain by Matty James today, which I didn't notice when I was doing the lineup graphic. Viner obviously signed that new deal last night. Absolutely huge. Um, sort of definitely like club captain in the in the making. Obviously been there since he was eight, and he's one of those that I'd love to see stick around for for years and years to come. And well, we've got another three hopefully with uh, with a bit of luck. But it equally could just mean that he goes to Bournemouth for fifteen million in the summer. But it's better than him going to Bournemouth for free. Here's kind of the work basis I work on now is how 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 long do we have to wait until we lose someone to Bournemouth because uh, they are building a very very solid 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 side this season. The uh, the Swansea team here: Rushworth, Key, Cabango, Grimes, Yates, Patino, Cullen, Wood, Norton, Ashby, Cooper. They've done that horrible thing where they put the keeper in and then put the rest of them in like number order. And my knowledge of Swansea isn't good enough to tell you where all of those players play. But Joe Allen's on the bench and. Uh, so is Jamie Patterson, from the looks of it. Liam Walsh left? Or is he injured? I have no idea. Someone let me know down in the comments. Uh, I, pu I presume he's injured, because I don't remember him leaving to go somewhere else, because I like Liam Walsh. He was good back in the, well, a few years ago now. He's one of those that got hampered by injuries in that in that year in lockdown, where it was him and Joe Williams were, well, and Alfie Mawson were kind of just constantly, constantly injured. It was like, oh, they're meant to be back in two weeks. And then all of a sudden they pick up another knock and it was just like never ending for whatever reason. And then I think when Pearson came in, didn't we like replace a load of the physios and the doctors and stuff? And he basically just overhauled the whole the whole thing. And um, well, up until this season, we've had a lot less injury issues, which is nice because that that was painful. Watching watching Chris Brunt and Henry Lansbury run around the midfield was uh, was not good. And giving Adam Bioak in Fenway his only goal in the championship. To a, uh, to a relegated Wickham side. For us, though, if you haven't seen the lineup, well, she's injured, but um, uh, according to Annie, which makes sense to be fair, and he basically is permanently injured, isn't he? But if you haven't already seen our lineup, it's O'Leary and Gold, Garden, Hickman, Vine, and Naismith, Pring making up the back four, Williams and James in the middle with uh, with Knight as a 10, and then Sykes and Bell either side of Naki, Naki Wells, who um, needs to score, ideally. Because well, I mean, he scored against Hull, didn't he? I suppose, but we just need we just need goals is what we need. Because <clears throat> I think if you look at that uh, the highlights at least of that game against Hull and the XG and the shots that we had, etc., then that was probably a game we win if we have Conway up front. Um, Birmingham, which is the only league game I've been to this season due to health issues, uh, probably. I mean, Wells missed that absolute sitter, didn't he? But. We didn't really create enough that not having a striker was, wasn't the issue in that one. Not having good enough footballers was the issue in that one. It was the same on Tuesday against Norwich. Um, but yeah, Wells needs to could do with a goal there. Sam Bell could do with a goal as well, actually. He does like a goal against Swansea. Obviously, we saw that in the Cup last year. To be honest, I don't really care who scores. It can go in off like their keeper's ass if it wants. I just need, we need to score, we need to win. Um, is all I'm after. But Naki Wells, about to get us underway here. In, uh, in South Wales, and we are off. He goes back to James out wide for Mark Sykes, who um, would be nice to see him get on the score sheet. And the, the first pass from Sykes isn't great. It goes well, a little bit past Gardner Hickman, but he, he recovers it well, switches it out wide, and it's been intercepted by Swansea, who look to get at Naismith now. 
through uh, through their number nine, who I don't actually know who it is. Uh, I should probably get a graphic up somewhere of their of their lineup so I can remember who their footballers are. But uh, we'll deal with that at a later date. Williams, what wh wh why are you doing that? He just gives away a silly foul on the halfway line. I'm not sure who it was. He was running away from him. I think it might have been Matt Grimes. And um, he's just all over him. It's like there's absolutely no need to do that. It's, uh, it's a bit silly, really. But what can you do? That's Joe Williams for you a lot of the time, unfortunately. Let's get the um, let's get the Swansea, Swansea team up somewhere so I know who I'm looking at. It, do, 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 where are they? There we go. Oh, Jerry Yates. I didn't realise he'd gone to Swansea. I'll be honest, because if you haven't seen on the channel and stuff, I was in hospital over the summer. It was a whole issue, which is half resolved um, at the moment. But that, well, I've got various bruises and, and whatever you on my arms and stuff at the moment from blood tests. So ignore those for the time being. But um, I didn't realise that Jerry Yates had gone to Swansea. I must have missed that one. But O'Leary now looking to reset us from the back after a failed Swansea attack, really, that was fairly easily cut out. And it's just, it's already, I mean, I know I appreciate we're 90 seconds in and I'm judging us very, very early here. But um, it is already very much uh, a similar look to Tuesday. We haven't really made any forward passes yet, which is good. Pring turns back inside and goes back into Naismith already. Um, this, is, this is really entertaining to watch this first two minutes, as always. And then we go for, oh dear, okay. I, I, I hope this two, first two minutes is purely us struggling to get going off the bat because if this is how the re remaining 88 are going to play out, I'm not going to be having a fun afternoon because this is, well, the only successful passes we've made so far have been backwards ones, which isn't great. Pring now going to take a throw in for us out on the left. There's no movement. Okay, there we go. Jason Knight makes a decent run, goes back to Pring, takes a man on, looking to get ball into the box maybe, handball, no. Gardner Hickman, I don't know if he is playing at right back or, okay, yeah, no, he is. He's he's just left a massive gap there because he bombed up the bombed up the pitch and kind of ended up, ended up on like the edge of the D for the or Swansea's D on the edge of the box there. And uh, Matty James gives away a free kick to to stop the the Swansea counter attack, which probably you know, it's a bit of a soft one, but it's probably the right idea from James there because they had a, a bit of a three on two going. Excuse me. Swansea now looking to get at us down the right. James in there again, looking to kind of shepherd, shepherd him into the corner. And he's done he's done well, but he's been turned. And they go back to the full back. And we forced them forced them back there to be fair. We dealt with that one well. I think um <clears throat> we're not possibly not going to create a whole lot ourselves today. It might be one of those where we need to rely on a Swansea error to to get something, which I mean could happen. Like I said, they haven't been great. They've been fairly is that a penalty? Sunderland have scored in 30 seconds. <laughs> Brilliant. Did, um, did, I can't remember his name, the striker go to Southampton in the end? Russell something. What's his name? Scottish one. Did he go to, did he go to Southampton? Because that was meant to be happening yesterday. And then I didn't, I didn't see if it did or not. Okay, here we go. Bell. Out on the left. Wells is in the middle. He's got Cabango on him, though. Bell looking to come inside. Gets the shot away. Yeah! Ah. Oh. Mark Sykes has just put a bicycle kick in the net. And um, he's offside, unfortunately. So Bell cuts inside, gets the shot away. It gets blocked and, and kind of loops up to the back post. And Sykes, with a brilliant finish, to be fair to him. Into the bottom corner, he's just offside as the shot comes in, I think. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Sykes has done brilliantly there, but that's that's a, a good a good sign now. That's the first sort of time we've we've got at Swansea. And uh, and Sam Bell and Mark Sykes doing very well together. Well, Sykes, I guess, getting a little bit lucky that it, it dropped to him, but when the ball came to him, an excellent finish. Just a bit of uh, a shame that he couldn't stay onside. I was a little bit surprised maybe not to see Yeboah start today, but I guess kind of the lack of the lack of options as a, as a lone striker kind of forces us into that. Excuse me. Because oh. um, Sam Bell, for me, isn't a, 
isn't a lone striker by any means. Maybe do all right with somebody next to him, but he's m m much better utilised out wide. And I don't think you... I think if you're dropping Cornick, I don't think your is the one you start ahead of Sykes <coughs> um, just yet, as good as he has looked. What is the minute? We are five minutes and 30 seconds in. Uh, and Taylor Garden Hickman advancing down the right-hand side. Probably, he lays it into Williams. He probably could have just kept running there. But Jason Knight now, and Garden Hickman has continued his run down the right and forces a throw in after, well, he had to stretch a little bit for the pass. But forces a throw in off of Key from uh, Swansea. Jason Knight now on the ball in the middle. He's probably the, the only one that I've, um, that can, I'm just trying to work, think how to word this, that can link our midfield and attack consistently, I guess, has been has been Jason Knight so far. Uh, we're, up to, we're up to a whole 10 people. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to the channel, share the stream around. We'll try and get try and get a couple of hundred in here at some point today. But um, the game is on Robins TV, which is what I'm watching it on. So I suppose a lot of people are either in Swansea at the game, which unfortunately, as you can tell, I'm not, or doing like I am, sat watching it on the telly. But... Uh, yeah, it's been a fairly dull Sunderland 2 0 up. Blimey. Fair play. Fair play. The um but yeah, first five minutes here, we've not done a whole lot. But here we go. Sam Bell now down the left hand side again. Ball comes in and it's cleared away by Key for a city corner. Zach Viner header? Anybody? I would. I'd very much enjoy that. I didn't realise Charlie Patino had signed for uh, Swansea either. I seem to have just missed all of this business that Swansea have done. Did they do a lot yesterday or something like that? Um, well, I suppose if it was only done yesterday, he wouldn't be able to play today, would he? But that's a, a decent sign, I suppose. He didn't really... Excuse me. Uh, didn't really do as well at Blackpool as, I guess, maybe some had hoped. From what I remember, but everybody loves the song. So I suppose we'll take that and run with it. The ball comes in. Knight's round at the back post. Oh, I thought that had gone in there, but he's headed it into the side netting. And uh, seven minutes gone here. We've been definitely been the better side. Swansea have barely got the ball so far, which is nice. We just need to continue, kind of continue what we're doing. We're creating a couple of chances. I can't really complain just yet. I'm not sure how Knight's managed to win that header. That's awful from Swansea. A two two defenders on him, and he's he's not the tallest of blokes, is he, Jason Knight? But he's managed to managed to win that one. To be fair to him, Swansea now don't look overly confident playing out from the back here. Which is um, nice for us, I suppose. But whoever this, <laughs> who is this guy? Nathan Wood has basically just stood there on the edge of the Swansea box for like thirty seconds, and nobody's gone near him. And he's just like, sta he's just standing around with the ball. Like he's made, he's now made a pass, but <laughs> for ages he was just like slowly walking up the pitch. Nobody was going near him. Here we go. We're pressing a bit better now. Jason Knight intercepts and it rolls back towards Naismith. He goes back to uh, to Max O'Leary. Oh, that's poor. Okay, there we go. Good challenge from Naismith. Pring, awful there from Pring. He went to turn and it just got caught out. And the uh, the ball bubbled through for Jerry Yates, I believe, before Naismith was able to get a good tackle in and, uh, and it intercept. There's just not a lot going on at the moment. We're passing it around the back. I feel like this is probably going to be the majority of this game. It's just going to be us passing around the back and them doing very much the same, I think. Who scored the um, Who scored the goals for Sunderland? Ah, uh, Swansea are in. 1-0 to Swansea. Josh Cullen. Sorry, Liam Cullen, not Josh Cullen. Um, after 10 minutes. So, no, so I guess a good goal, to be fair. I'm not, I think it might have been Patino played him through after I just said he didn't do brilliantly last year. And uh, Clark and Equa. And, yeah, Swansea with the goal. That's not ideal. Um, it's a really nice ball. Naismith. Oh, that's poor. That's poor from Naismith. It's a nice ball, but Cullen's just got round to the other side of him far too easily there. And that, my friends, is why you don't play Naismith at centre-back. Um, yeah, that's not ideal. It's a good finish from Cullen, to be fair. And ten minutes in, we're 1-0 down. That's frustrating. 
And now we are. We're, now we need a, a good comeback here, which we're so in, we're not inconsistent, though, are we? We're just not good at football. Is what we are. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say we're inconsistent. We've just been bad. Other than that, that game against Millwall where we were weirdly good. Um, but even in that one, we didn't create a lot. We were just very solid defensively and then took the chance that we got. Um, I suppose Oxford, you could argue we were good. But again, they're in League 1, League 2. So it's a, that's a game we should be winning. Every other game, we've been fairly poor. Um, I mean, I didn't watch the whole game, but I watched, watched Preston. We weren't particularly good. Um, watched Millwall. We weren't good for large parts of the game. We were strong defensively. Uh, but didn't really offer a lot going forwards other than the goal. And even that came from a long throw. Um, Hull created a bit more. I've only seen the highlights, didn't go uh, and didn't watch it at the time. This one, we started well, had a good first five, six minutes. And then the last five minutes have been all have been all Swansea. I think we'll get playoffs, but we always get 15th or 16th. I wouldn't say we've, we've thought we were going to get playoffs since 2019, 20? That season that got like cut in cut in half by lockdown. I suppose maybe the year after actually when we had that good start under Holden and won four of four to begin with. But other than that, it's it's been let's just stay up the the two years, the two full seasons after that, and then um, this one. I suppose you kind of push push a little bit towards mid table and being like, oh maybe we could get top half. But a lot of that banked on either keeping Alex Scott or selling Alex Scott and reinvesting the money re really well. And what we've actually managed to do is sell Alex Scott and not be allowed to reinvest the money by Steve Lansdowne slash financial fair play restrictions and ended up in a position where we don't have our best player, <coughs> our most clinical striker, not top scorer, but probably would have been if he wasn't injured for the points of last season, is injured. Um, luckily, we've managed to get Pring and Viner tied down to new deals, which is massive, to be fair. Uh, bringing in new signings who have got injured, Vyman's injured, so it's kind of a bit like a little bit flat basically. But we might have a chance here. It's Williams finds Wells and it's poor. Oh. Jason Knight's just decided to handball it. Which is always good. So Swansea for, for Swansea free kick now on the halfway line. Ollie Cooper uh, walking away from that one. And it's just it's been a very dull game other than the goal really. The goal and, and the one well I suppose the disallowed goal from us, um, which was fairly obviously offside I'd say, uh, due to the reaction or lack of reaction there of the Swansea defenders. But Wells has managed to nick it high up the pitch, off of Cabango, and comes inside now for Jason Knight. Maybe he'll have a crack from the edge of the box. Oh, okay, just over the bar. I mean, it was good press in there from Wells. And um, unfortunately, just over the bar from Jason Knight. But that would have been a hell of a goal if he'd, if he'd managed to stick that into the top corner. Just shifts out of his feet onto his right foot and then gets the strike away. Unfortunately, to no avail. But I mean, Swansea, like, we can definitely, definitely score here, <laughs> which is nice because we don't do that a lot. Um, I think we just need to keep at it and we need to press them a little bit better than we are, which I guess is where your bow starting would have been good. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can find an equaliser sooner rather than later because Swansea don't look like the only time they got at us was the goal. So that's an issue defensively in terms of not dealing with the threat when it came. But equally, I suppose you could argue that we've limited them to only threatening us once in the opening 15 minutes, which is good had they not scored. Um, whereas we've had, what, two, three decent chances, a half, half chances, I'd say. We haven't had like a clear cut, oh, we should have scored that moment. Um, and Pring now running down the left, lays it off to Sam Bell, goes to get the ball into the middle, it drops for Wells, he gets the shot off and it was blocked. Fairly easily there. Cabango and Wood just standing strong together in the middle. Ah, oh, it's poor from Williams again. We've been really sloppy in midfield actually so far. 
and that's good there from Viner stepping up, getting a good challenge in. Oh, brilliant tackle from Williams as well. And it nearly bobbled through for the Wells, but unfortunately it got cut out. And we come at them again now. Garden Hickman out wide. Lifts a good ball in. Wells is there. It's a good header away from Cabango. Still got the ball there. We've got a few players up here. Garden Hickman kind of lurking on the edge of the box. Lovely ball over the top for Sam Bell. He goes to get in the cross and it's cleared away fairly easily by Grimes. And we won ourselves a throw in high at the pitch. This is where you could do with Harry Cornick, but unfortunately the long throw-ins are kind of all he's good for at the moment. Um, he doesn't offer a whole lot else, so Pringle will take this one. Short to Jason Knight, who managed to get away from his man. And goes to put it in and it's low and it's good goalkeeper in there. Wells couldn't quite get in ahead of the keeper. He catches it and looks to looks to set Swansea away. He's got a ridiculous throw on him, that goalkeeper. He has just thrown the ball from his six yard box to our like into our half. That's um that could be an issue at some point. Well it nearly was an issue there. Cullen nearly got through again, but Viner with some strong defensive work. And we look to come at Swansea again now. 16 minutes gone here. Been behind for, what, six minutes or so. And uh, so other than the goal, we've been been all over them. Um, unfortunately, they had their one chance and they've taken it. And I have a feeling that they are just going to sit on it. They don't, they haven't, like I said, they haven't threatened us other than that. So we need to um, need to just keep up what we're doing, I suppose, uh, in terms of going forwards. We've been, we've been strong. So hopefully we can um, keep it up and eventually, eventually break through. Nobody, why are we not pressing there? This is, I find this strange. We're allowing Swansea so much time on the ball in their own half, and I appreciate that it, it, you know, it's not threatening for them to have the ball in their own half. But the issue is, if they suddenly decide to pick up the pace, we're on the back foot because we're not already chasing it. But they've dropped a sloppy pass there. And Sykes getting around the edge of it, the outside of his man goes to get the shot away. And it's a good block from uh, Wood there to put it behind for the corner. Sykes has had a decent. I mean, to be fair, like I said, we've started. We've started well. We've been the better side. We've been more on the front foot than they have. Sykes and Bell uh, creating a lot down the wings. To be fair to them, Knight's done okay through the middle so far. Uh, Garden Hickman, when he's got on the ball, has been good. Pring Pring has been getting the ball a lot more though out on the left. And uh, Garden Hitman got to take this corner now. It's going to be an outswinger from the looks of it. Right footed from the right hand side. Sykes with a, with a bit of a dummy run short. The ball comes in and it's a decent one. I'm not quite sure who got their head on that, but they had a hell of a jump to get there. And it comes out to the edge of the box for Sykes. He lays it in for Williams now, fires it across. Just came back from eating lunch and you've missed a goal. You have indeed. Um, a good goal, to be fair. I think it was Patino played it through to Cullen. Uh, you got the wrong side of Naismith, and Naismith just didn't have the pace to catch back up to him, and he slotted it past, left-footed, past O'Leary into the bottom corner. It's a good finish, to be fair. Um, but other than that, we've been all over them. So you haven't missed a whole lot other than the goal, we've got to be honest. A couple of half chances for us, but nothing major. Well, it depends if you were here when Sykes had a goal disallowed, actually. Um, Sykes had a bicycle kick disallowed uh, after Bell cut inside and had a shot, and the ball got blocked and looped up to the far post. Sykes... Similar to that Sheju one away at um, Villa a few years ago. I don't know if anyone will remember that back in 2019. And uh, But yeah, unfortunately just offside. And Viner goes to play. Williams in behind there, but a bit over hit and goes out for a Swansea goal kick. What are the scores in the other games at the moment? Let's have a look. Yeah, interesting. Oh, Everton are winning. At Sheffield United, that's um, a surprise, I suppose. How far have I got to scroll to find the championship? Too far, seemingly. Let's have a look at this Everton game. Well, uh, there's not a lot going on in City. Who scored for Everton? Decore, right? I don't know. Not the, um, not really the player you'd expect to score, I suppose. Right, back to City. There's still not a lot going on. We've got a throw in in our own half on the left-hand side that Prakam brings got to take. And it's just been fairly non-eventful so far, other than the goal. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we are still behind here at Swansea.com Stadium, and that's poor from Prane. He's been 
Swansea have got to come at us again now. It's sloppy passing and sloppy marking again now. And not to pick up his man. But that's a good block. There we go. He's recovered that time after a, a dodgy 10 seconds there, Prim. Swansea now will take the corner. And, uh, well, if we go 2-0 down here, then it's probably game over. So let's not do that, ideally. Because that wouldn't be much use. It's going to be an in-swinger, from the looks of it, from Swansea. Left-footed from the left-hand side. Ball comes in. And it's, 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 it's finally sort of way. Okay, never mind. We've given it straight back to them. Sort of just inside our half. Oh, challenge. Oh, excuse me. Right, we've got to try and hit them on the counter now. Sam Bell down the left-hand side. They've got, man, they've got men back, but Sykes is in a race at the back post with somebody. And it's cut back and it's a decent shot from Wells. But goalkeeper, well, it wasn't really a decent shot. A decent move. Wells got the shot off. Hits the target, but straight down the keeper's throat, unfortunately. I think the ball was probably better off looking for Sykes at the back stick. Or going all... Or if, Maybe if Wells leaves it, does it go tonight? No, no, it probably gets intercepted, to be fair. But I'd argue that uh, the ball the ball should have been put back to the back post against uh, Sykes, who was making a really good run there up against Wood. Swansea have been a bit sloppy in uh, in their passing. I mean, we've been not amazing by any means, but more controlled than they are, I'd say. That's good there from Naismith, just shepherding the ball out of play. Up against uh, up against Cherry Yates, really really solid defending, and wins us a throw, it, which Garden Hitman's got to take. I, I'm not. I find it a little bit harsh, maybe on Tanner. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but a little bit harsh, maybe on Tanner being dropped uh, in place of Garden Hitman for his to make his full debut, kind of out of position ish. I know he played it. Right. Well, that's just silly from. That's just silly from Williams, isn't it? Pearson having words with one of the Swansea coaches there who uh, decided to pick the ball up when we were meant to be taking a throw in and start doing all of this crap against Williams. But um, this, this Swansea have been very, very boring in this game. I'll be honest, they have not really got our oh, just silly from Naismith. Very, very silly. And gives away a foul on the halfway line. And um, what happened there? <laughs> Swansea fans bringing out the classic I can't read and I can't write song. Always nice. I'm yet to hear Cardiff get battered everywhere they go though, so that's good. In the, you know, we hate Cardiff more derby, as it's been, as it's been dubbed by various people. <laughs> Um, I did a, I see a video on Twitter though earlier, people saying Swansea get battered everywhere they go, which just, just stop, please, <laughs> just stop, because it's, it's an awful song, let alone when you start singing it for like multiple teams, and it's bad enough when we just sing Cardiff get battered everywhere they go all the time, but, oh, excuse me, this game is clearly trying to send me to sleep, um, Swansea, you're back to the keeper there, and uh, Wells nearly intercepting. Naismith has just missed like the most simple header in the world. He's literally just like the ball's dropping and he's he's got a man in front of him, but he's he's all over him and he's gone to gone to head it and just missed the ball. That was quite impressive though. He's made a good challenge there though. <laughs> and the, the Swansea players just fell on his ass as well. Wells now looking to turn and get at them. Spell Knights wide open if we can cut it back here. Oh, it's off the line. Oh. Oh. Bell with a brilliant run down the left goes to cut it across for Wells and it gets it gets cleared away it drops for Jason Knight who goes to put it back into the far corner and it gets blocked again off the line by uh, I'm not sure who it was by Grimes maybe? yeah Matt Grimes off the line and then Williams hits it from the edge of the box and we had a very similar like pattern of play happen against Hull um, which is Interesting, I guess, but Garden Hitman now to whip the corner in. It'll be an in-swinger this time from the left-hand side. Puts the ball in, and it's over everybody and out for a goal kick on the other side. Excellent. That's just what you want from a corner. That is just what you want from a corner, isn't it? Deary, deary me. 
I mean, you do, we don't have anybody that stands out. I guess Viner as a person to aim for from set pieces, really, do we? Which is a shame. I didn't realise it was them. I didn't realise that Swansea keeper was on loan from Brighton. I, I, I seem to have just ignored Swansea in the transfer window because that's the third or fourth player who's popped up now who I didn't know was there. But he's supposed to be quite good, I think, isn't he, that Rushworth, from what I've heard and seen and stuff. But he hasn't really had a lot to do yet. We've, we've had a couple of chances, but not really troubled him. Anyway, um, I need to stop yawning, but something needs to happen in this game to make me stop yawning. Because at the moment, there is absolutely nothing going on. Sykes so going to press key there, but gets caught out with, the, with him playing the ball off, basically. And Williams does well there, wins it back off key. Can we get going now? They don't, they don't have a right back. Can we run at them? No? Okay. Jason Knight's just been absolutely ruined by Matt Grimes. And uh, Swansea just continued to play it around pretty poorly. Well, not pretty poorly, pretty, pretty dull, basically, playing it around the back. And we continue to half press them. Oh, there we go. That's a good challenge from, from Sykes. Wells now not really got much in the way of support. Shifts onto his left. And ah, oh, it's poor. It's poor. Shifted it onto his left past, uh, past Norton. And just fires it miles over the bar. High and wide. I mean, he, oh, you could argue he could have laid it into Williams. Who was trying to make a run down the, down the right of Wells. But he had Matt Grimes with him. It's actually painful how we haven't scored yet. It is, I agree. The Swansea have had one chance and, and scored it. We've been all over them. I want to have a look at the at half time, I'll have a look at the stats on them um, and sofa score and foot model and what have you. And see um, see just how unlucky we've been. Because we've had. Oh, well, I mean, Jason Knight's shot that got cleared off the line was, is the best chance we've had. But that's good defending from Matt Grimes, to be fair. And uh, obviously, the, off, the offside one with Sykes was unfortunate. But since Swansea, like, other than the goal, Swansea haven't troubled us. I say that as they get on the attack now. It's good to oh, Excuse me. This is awful. And um, O'Leary just smashes it clear there because he had a man clo closing him down after the ball went back into him. It's a loose pass from Swansea over, the, uh, over their own defence, which Bell chased down, but Rushworth ran, won the race uh, out from his goal. And we turn back into James now. Goes out wide to Pring. Looks to lift one in. Oh, it's 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 interesting goalkeeping, but it's worked. From Rushworth, he, he instead of catching the cross, he kind of like batted it down with one hand, and it nearly just dropped in the path of Sam Bell. But uh, sorry, Mark Sykes Bell was the one who put the ball in, I think. Um, but yes, yeah, Swansea is this game so far has basically just been Swansea passing it around the back, us intercepting it somewhere in the pitch, getting at them a little bit, and then the same thing repeating itself, other than the goal which is where we were just caught out of position, um, lost the ball on the halfway line, and they, they took their chance where we weren't we weren't in our shape because we were on our way back. It must have come from a corner or something, I think. Um, something like that. But, yeah, we were out of shape on the halfway line. Naismith with some questionable defending up against Liam Cullen, but he's never going to have the pace. Once, once Cullen had got around the other side of him, uh, Naismith was never going to have the pace to catch him. Oh, that's sloppy there from Knight, and he's he's gonna to have to recover. And yeah, he's done well there. To be fair, a sloppy pass, but um, I think it was Cullen down the left hand side, picked up picked the ball up off of it, and uh, tried to play inside, and Williams cuts it out, and Bell now looking to cut in on his right foot, and it's I mean decent defending, I suppose. Shot blocked pretty much. Shot was blocked pretty much as soon as it left Bell's foot. Viner now got the ball on the halfway line. Can we get going again here? So the first sort of long stint of possession we've had for a little while. Most of the ball, most of the time, first four or five minutes or so, we were we were like constantly on the ball, and then since then it's been a lot of Swansea passing it around the back. Since they scored, pretty much they've just been happy to pass it around the back, and hope that we don't press them too hard. Which I mean, when we've pressed, we've done well and we've intercepted and and caught over the ball and, and got at them, but we're just not quite pressing as much as I'd maybe like personally. But equally, I get you don't want to, you know, we can't just get at them constantly and, and risk leaving gaps because that's the uh, 
that's the risk you take, I suppose, playing against a, a sort of more controlled possession, you know, tippy tappy type side, which Swansea have been in this game. And that's a lovely baller there from Garden Hitman across to Wells, and it's nearly put into the own, put into his own net there by the Swansea defender. I'm not sure who it was, but Wells was allowed to get through way too easily there for Swansea, and uh, and we won ourselves a corner. He cut the ball back towards Bell, and it was um it was put out for the corner. No, for a, a throw in in the end apparently. I thought it went out for a corner, but evidently not. Um, by the Swansea defender, Gardner Hickman now takes the corner, uh, the throw in, sorry, into Williams, goes back to Gardner Hickman across to Viner, and Naismith now with a shocking ball up pitch. But he recovers it, and could we get a shot away here, perhaps? Ball drops for Sam Bow, and it's an equaliser, maybe. No, he's also offside. Excellent. All right, well, that's the second disallowed goal. So we've had the ball in the net twice. And uh, now we just need to learn to stay on side, apparently. It's a really nice move, actually. Wells into Naismith. Naismith cuts it back across. Oh, yeah, he is off. He is off. Cabango hadn't quite got back to uh, to play him on, unfortunately. It's a good finish, though, from Sam Bell. Really nice finish. But um, unfortunately, just not quite stayed on side. But we're showing promising signs. We're, we're actually creating chances in this game, which is more than can be said for uh, for Tuesday night against Norwich where we were just dire. And we could do with a winner, because this is going into the international break as well, isn't it? And uh, obviously, your fifth league game, it's a bit of a, right, where are we at after this? So if we could have two wins, two wins, two draws, one loss, would be, would be all right. Would be all right. I'd be happy with that. If we could, uh, if we could turn this one around, though, that relies on. And I keep forgetting that Swansea are actually 1-0 up, because they haven't done anything other than that goal. So we, if we could get the, the equaliser needs to come before half time, I think, because I think second half Swansea are likely just to come on and um, and sit in and defend, which is basically what they've done in this half. To be fair, they've been very happy just to control the ball, control possession around the edge of their box. What's, what, can we just take the throw? What's going on? Okay, there we go. Garden Hitman eventually takes the throw, and he's being pressed here by Cullen, and he's won us another throw in. Won us another throw in. This is all like in our half by our box. So, <sighs> excuse me, something needs to happen in this game to wake me up, because I'm knackered. But um, Taylor Garden Hitman now to take the throw in eventually, maybe if somebody. There's no movement for him at all, and he's had no choice. Once he's got the ball back off the throw, but just to hump it, hump it, thump it long. Cameron Archer scores for Sheffield United. Thought he was going to sign for us. I wish he did. Could you imagine? Is that one all in that Sheffield United game? I would kill for somebody like. Uh, oh no, I wouldn't kill. I'm probably not allowed to say that on YouTube, but I would love to have somebody like Cameron Archer in this side. I mean, we've got we've got Tommy Conway. It's just that he's injured. Um, and once he, once, you know, that's the thing is once Conway's back and Vyman's back and we eventually see a bit of Ross McCrory once he's back from injury, but that's looking like the new year now, um, which is very unfortunate because from the little bit we saw of him in pre-season, he looked very good. Um, and from what I've seen when he was playing at Aberdeen and things like that, he, he was always solid. And Swansea had a corner there, but we dealt with it fairly easily. That's the thing I think we've got to remember is we've got good players, key players, like Vyman and, and Conway, still to come back from injury. <clears throat> and, um, and players like Knight and, and Gardner Hitman and Dickey and have got to take a bit of time to adjust. Speaking of which, that was an awful pass from uh, Gardner Hitman back across our own defence. He's, he's dwelled on the ball for too long there after he recovered. He recovered really well, but Swansea have got to come at us now. Vyman has been dragged out of position. He's got to get back. And Naismith has just completely missed the ball. And it's eventually out for a goal kick. That was some horrendous defending. Atkinson and Ben Aroos as well. I mean, Atkinson, yeah, definitely key player. Um, well, I knew I knew I was missing somebody. But Ben Aroos, we've got to remember, whilst he looked good in the games he played at the end of the 21-22 season, he's been injured for 18 months-ish. And he's not a seasoned pro by any means. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if once... 
well, I suppose maybe not now, actually, because we don't really have depth at the moment. Um, if we had still had Scott or managed to bring in another midfielder to replace Scott, I think Benarus probably would have come back from injury and gone out on loan in January. Um, whereas now I suspect he'll come back from injury in January, or, well, whenever he comes back, and um, and be kind of in the squad, like, in, like kind of doing what Yeboah's doing. Because that's what he was doing before he got injured the first time round, I believe. I don't recall him starting many. He might have started a couple towards the back end of that season. Um, but yeah, we need to remember with Benarus that it's got to take time. He's had two ACL injuries. Um, you know, we can't go rushing him back. We can't just throw him into the middle of a championship side who are probably going to be struggling-ish um, and expect him to be this amazing midfielder. He may he may come on from the bench a few times and be really good, um, as he had done before. And I hope and I hope he does because you know I love Paris. I think he was he was brilliant, and it's very unfortunate that we've had the two injuries to deal with. But um, yeah, that'll be an, an interesting one. Atkinson, was there a time frame put on the Atkinson um, injury at the moment? Because I know he said Vyman after the international break, hopefully, uh, as long as he doesn't come back and then get injured again like he did on Friday uh, last week against Hull. Um, and obviously McCrory's going to be some point in the new year probably now due to this weird bacterial thing that uh, that they're going on about, which hasn't been actually been disclosed what it is, for, and, and rightfully so, because um, like, like Pearson was saying in training in November, okay, so that's not too bad, I guess. Um, although it does it does leave us short for like nearly half the season, I suppose, because if he's only going to be back training in November, then he presumably will be back playing until sort of back end of November, early December, sort of time um, after the sort of extended period he's had out. That's what Pearson said in the press conference with Big Rob. Yeah, it would be taking a while then, wouldn't it? But at least we, I suppose we've got Naismith, Dickey, Viner. Pring can do a job at centre-half if need be. But, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to have Atkinson back because Atkinson and Viner just looked so, like, so solid last season for the most part. Well, maybe not the most part, second half of the season. Poor again. Okay, we've actually won a free kick from that. There's There's been nothing going on in the game for the last sort of five, ten minutes, which is why I haven't been talking about the game specifically too much. Um, but Viner's won us a free kick, sort of just inside our own half. So we at Swansea have been pushing us a little bit more last sort of five minutes or so. But um, we've been we've been pinned back into our own half for the last few minutes. So we could do with getting back to doing what we were doing before. We were getting at them a bit more. <laughs> Excuse me. We're right. We go out wide now for Pring. Ball slightly over here, but he's managed to get round to it. It's good defending from Swansea, but Pring's skipped back round him, and oh, he's dwelled on the ball for far too long. He had four men waiting in the box, and he he just couldn't quite make his mind up. I don't think as to whether he wanted to carry on the run or uh, or put the ball across. But we've won ourselves a corner from it, which uh, Taylor Garden Hickman. Is presumably going to take once again. He is indeed, and the two deliveries he's put in, three, two or three deliveries he's put in so far, haven't really yielded a lot. But hopefully this one can. Cooper, Cooper and Sykes with a bit of back and forth there inside the box, and the rest picked up on it. And he's gonna have a, gonna have a word, which is just gonna delay the corner being taken. Really, it's just a little, little bit of shirt pulling, you know, back and, back and forth as, as always from the corner, and uh, Sykes looking to lose his man. He's, he's doing well, to be fair to him, but there's only any use if the ball in is any good. And the ball in is good, and it's a foul on the keeper, apparently. Well, I guess it was on the keeper, I don't really know. But it's going to have a massive impact in the second half, hopefully, hopefully. I'm not sure who we take off, though. I wouldn't stop him on at half-time, because um, Sykes and Bell have been excellent down the wings. Maybe you take the risk, move Bell into the middle. Wells hasn't done a whole lot, but for me, Wells... Bell is far better out wide than uh, than through the middle. But yeah, Yeboah against the Swansea side who are going to be tiring second half. And if they're still 1-0 no up, passing it around the back like they are, Yeboah could be absolutely brilliant. And we saw that on Tuesday night against Norwich when they were 1-0 no up and um, had kind of settled into just playing around the back for the last 20 minutes or so when Yeboah got thrown on. 
he was excellent. Matty James has gone down injured here, which isn't a good sign. Because he's not a man who, like, who tends to stay down. And um, what actually happened? Ooh. He's gone up for a header against Cooper and kind of... Cooper's like moved his body to turn for the ball. And Pring has... Uh, James, sorry, has... Gone, gone over on his back. Wow, that kind of landed on his hip. And he looks to be in quite a lot of discomfort. And hasn't really moved. Like, he's moved as in he's, like, conscious. But <laughs> he looks pretty uncomfortable. I've just seen my old teacher in the crowd. That's um, a bit weird. But James still down here. It looks like he, it's probably his hip from what I can see the, the physio or doctor or whatever's doing. We've looked good there. We've looked good. We've looked a lot more creative than we have done in previous games. Um, it's just kind of, I guess, similar to Hull, maybe just that, that finishing touch that we're missing, that final... Or maybe not even the finishing touch in terms of the, the finish, other than the Jason Knight one, which is just good defending. Um, but in terms of that final pass, just hasn't quite been there. We've kind of got to the got into the box a lot of the time, and the, the final pass just hasn't quite come off how we hoped. Pearson's taken the time now to have a word with Sykes and Pring, and a couple of the other players while uh, <sighs> while James is down injured. Excuse me, while James is down injured, about forty three, sorry, forty two minutes on the clock now. Uh, I mean, this will be a bit of added time since James has been down a couple of minutes or so already. But uh, other than that, there's not really been a whole lot to report. James doesn't look comfortable. I think it was his hip, from what I can tell. And he's, he's kind of limping around a bit. Hopefully it's just one of those things where he's landed on it a bit funny and... Once he gets going again, he'll it'll be all right. But we could um, do without another injury in midfield. What would what would we do in terms of a sub if he if he went off here? Guess you maybe move Garden Hoopman into the middle and bring Tanner on. I suppose because I don't really want to bring King on. I'd rather far sooner bring Tanner back in, despite the full performance on Tuesday, and move Garden Hoopman into the middle where he can get at people a little bit more. But uh, we restart here. And it looks as though James is going to come back on. And we've caught ball just about, just about near the ball here with, uh, oh, well, you know, in this case somebody was offside again. We, we've been offside a lot in this game. We need to, we need to work that one out and, uh, and start timing the runs and the passes better. Because it, that's the four, third or fourth time now we've had like a silly offside. Also, we've had the two goals disallowed as well. So we need to work on that one. That's poor. I don't know, man. There's just not a lot going on, I can't be honest. It's, been, it's basically just us passing it around the back a little bit now. Naismith does well, lays it back into Viner. Excuse me, who gave the ball away. And uh, James is back on now. Swansea burst into the box. Sykes shepherds Patino back out though. Cullen now lifts the ball into the middle and it's it's fairly poor. And Pring scoops it away. And up towards Naki Wells. And Williams there just absolutely lumps it long. Sykes has just been turned there uh, very easily by by uh, by Wood for Swansea. Three 0 Sunderland, <laughs> blimey! I did ask this earlier, but did um, did Stewart end up going to Southampton or not, or did he stay at Sunderland? Because I saw a video last night on um, on Twitter of some Sunderland fan like burning the burning their shirt from Wembley or something last year or the year before. Was it last? Yeah, they got promoted the year before, didn't they? From the year they went up. 
Are you went to Stuart? Do you mean you went to Southampton? <laughs> but um, is he is he playing or, or did he not sign in time today? That's a hell of a result though for Sunderland on the basis they don't stuff it up, which I presume they wouldn't. What's the score in the um, Millwall game as well? Have they beaten whoever they're playing? Birmingham? <laughs> right, four minutes of injury time here. One minute already played. Well, 50 seconds already played. Can we get one last attack going? Could Taylor Garden hit down the right-hand side? It's a sloppy pass into Wells. Yeah, he went to Southampton. <laughs> no, he isn't playing. Uh, not registered in time. It's Birmingham 1, Mill... Sorry, Birmingham 0, Millwall 1. Wells has intercepted a... Whoa, he's got to go for that. That's a horrendous tackle from Norton. Wells nicked the ball off of off of a pass, a sloppy pass between the two centre halves. I mean, all the city players need to just oh, okay. The, the the book's out for Norton here. It looks like it's only got to be a yellow. Yeah, Carl Norton booked there. I mean, it's probably the challenge he had to make ultimately, isn't it? So it's, it's a sloppy pass from his from uh, from Wood and. Wells caught hold of it and he literally just nicked it past um, just nicked it past Norton and was in or about to be in and Norton just absolutely clattered him and instantly pointed at the defender who was who was slightly behind him um, so he didn't get sent off for being the last man but like I said we've been we've been good we've been much improved from Tuesday just not quite managed to take the chance unfortunately we've got 90 seconds or so left on the clock Pickford own goal. Wait. Ah, oh, uh, well, I've got Pickford in my fantasy team, so that's that's a shame. Gardner Hitman now with the ball into the box, and it's round the back. It, if we, we've got the ball in the net. Oh, for God's sake, he's offside again. And somebody's been booked. Naismith's been booked for presumably having a go at the ref. We've scored three times in this half, and they've all been offside. By like little bits as well, like not. So who's actually offside in this? Is it an offside? Was he? What's the issue? Oh, it's a foul, I think. I think it's a foul from Knight on. I don't really know what's gone on there. Because I don't think he was offside. May have been a foul. I'm not sure on that one. But either way, the goal hasn't count. It's a good finish from Knight then. So we've scored three really nice goals, but unfortunately none of them are going to count. We should at least be level here, but the good thing is we're, we're creating the chances. Oh, for God's sake, ref. Swansea man's down, and the ref was quite happy to play on when it was uh, when Swansea had the ball. As soon as we get the ball, he blows up, and it's uh, it's oh hold on, look, this bloke's down injured, and he's got back up straight away. That's good. It's always nice. But I mean, it's just been like classic City, really. This half, one defensive error led to a Swansea goal. I mean, now we're buzzing because they've got away with a bit defensively. And taken their only chance of the game and and cracked on, but the good thing is it's not like we've been, you know, we've been we've been the better side. I'd say um, it's just a bit, and that's half time there. One all. If anybody's also watching the game as well as the stream, leave your thoughts in the chat uh, on the first half. But yeah, overall we've been the better side. It's just a case of needing that that cutting edge again, unfortunately. And well, the three times we've had it, we've been offside, which is. A bit of an issue, but other than that, I'd say I'd say a good first half. On the whole, um, and my two-one. What did I say? Two-nil in the end. 
and his 2-1 score prediction is still live. Archer's shot hits the post and bounces back into the net, off, bounces back off Pickford and into the net. <laughs> Everton are going down, aren't they? It is excellent. Because this is their last year at Goodison, I think. So if they go down, that would be nice. Birmingham have a penalty saved. Oh, so angry we're not ahead, let alone level. Ref's a joke. Yeah. It's a bit annoying. Let's see what Twitter thinks. The refs have an absolute shocker, by the way. Um, but yeah, just need to just need to take our chances. Best half of the se I'm just looking through Twitter. Best half of the season should be level at least. Uh, they should be down to ten from that Northern challenge, which was very bad. Um, but what can you do? I suppose that's football, unfortunately. And uh, it's definitely championship referees. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Anybody? Anybody got any major thoughts on that first half? If you're uh, if you're watching the game as well as the, the as well as this stream, and also if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that. Because uh, yeah, why not? Be honest, it helps me out. And leave a like on the stream, share it around for the second half. Hopefully, City can turn it around. The stats have just been uh, put out as well. So Swansea, 54% possession to our 46. Most of that come in, obviously, after they scored when they've been passing it around the back. They've had five shots. We've had 10, which is nice. Uh, only two on target, though, unfortunately. One on target for them. Our two on target come in from uh, Wells and Knight. Wells put one straight down, the, uh, straight down the keeper's throat, and then Knight had one cleared off the line as well. We've had four corners to their two. Um, we've also given away nine fouls. We have been a little bit clumsy with the fouls. They've only given away two. I mean, one of them should have been a red card, arguably. But uh, on the whole, on the whole, very good half. Um, just frustrating the one the one time Swansea had a clear opportunity to score. They did so. Um, and unfortunately, the three times we've had good opportunities to score, we've been offside, uh, which is slightly frustrating. But... Um, Bristol Live have put out their player ratings for the first half. Should we have a quick look at these? Player ratings for the first half. O'Leary's got a six. Gardner, Hickman and Viner got a six. Sykes got a six. Naismith, Pring, James, Williams, Knight. And uh, Wells getting seven. Sam Bell getting an eight. That sounds about right to me. Sykes has been okay. He's not really got the ball as much as Bell. Most of our, most of our joys come down that left-hand side through Bell getting the ball uh, across the box. The classic kind of... Cutting in from the um, from the left that he likes to do, getting a shot or two away, or uh, or playing it across the box, which has worked at points and not worked quite so well at other points in terms of uh, in terms of of, in, of, of, that, of ending up in a shot. So I guess yeah, we can't be we can't. I'm not upset by any means. I think we've been we've been very solid in that half, on the whole. Um, we just need to. Just need to try and take our chances, I guess, ultimately, which hopefully we will do in the second half. Um, but yeah, make sure you share the stream around for the second half, which will be kicking off in probably not that long now, five, ten minutes or so, I expect. And uh, hopefully we can turn this thing around because it would be a massive three points if we can. Obviously, shooting towards our own fans in the second half will do us some good. Oh, Sheffield United's kit sponsors, I believe. I've just seen it on Twitter. It's not very nice at all. What would it be like if Tommy Conway was on the pitch right now? Oh, we'd be electric. We'd be winning the league. That's what we'd be doing. We were 1 0 up at Birmingham. Sunderland 3 0 up at Southampton. Obviously, we are 1 0 down away at Swansea. How long have we got until the second half? Probably another 5 10 minutes, yeah. Archer getting the assist via, uh, according to Fantasy Football, for the own goal. Might have to get him in. Might have to get him in. How is my fantasy team looking at the moment? Is that the only is that the only game on at the moment in the Prem? I don't think I've got anybody playing in that one. 
If you're not in my fantasy league as well, you can find it linked on my linked on my socials. The uh, the winner's got to get an Amazon voucher at the end of the season. So uh, make sure you enter that one if you haven't already. I've just seen a bit of a photo of City fans on Twitter. I forgot we'd sold out. I mean, as as we should for a game so close. But it looks like um, a pretty good, pretty good crowd to be fair. Have they cut the allocation? Because I swear it used to go further across on the top than it does in this photo. Maybe they've given us less fans this year. Who knows? Toby Osborne's just tweeted, obviously, taking a break from commentary during half-time. One of the more frustrating 45 minutes of football I've witnessed, but don't want it to be a distraction to how dangerous we're looking. Ball in the net three times and that midfield is looking seriously dynamic. Goals will slash must come. Which I agree with, to be fair. The, the midfield has been very, very good. Uh, okay, it was disallowed for a push from uh, Jason Knight rather than a rather than an offside. The uh, the third one, which I mean, it was it was two hands in the back to be fair. So I guess you can't complain on that one too much, uh, as much as it would have been. As much as it would. <laughs> oh dear, I love I love football. I've just seen a tweet that says. This is a video from Luton fans last night telling Zuma during the warm-up that he's got to kick the ball like his cat, which is quite impressive. Um, obviously, if nobody gets that reference, then do you live under a rock, I guess? Uh, we just need we just need some little extra spark in this second half, I think, don't we? Just need a little bit of an extra spark. Hopefully, we get it soon. Oh dear. Right, let's look at this stuff. I'm just showing the higher... Um, it's a little bit soft, I think, that that foul from Knight for the third, the third disallowed goal. It's a little bit. I feel, feel like the... The player who's been pushed, I'm not actually sure who it was, has um, exaggerated that one slightly. But, uh, ow, it's not my leg or something. But yeah, hopefully, second half, come out. If we could find an equaliser before like 60 minutes and then chuck your bow at them. Imagine your bow a winner or an equaliser. I'd love, I just want to see him come on. Because um, I think with the way they've been, they've been playing, I think he could do some serious, serious damage in the second half and just like getting at them, I suppose. Um, and be in that sort of force we need to just like properly press them because that's what he did on Tuesday coming on against a tired Norwich side towards the end of the game and uh, and yeah just having a, having a good impact having a solid impact on um, on us as a as a side basically every time he's come on so far for me at least he's looked very very solid What is it? What are everybody's thoughts on um, on Ekbrim Yeboah? Because I think he's excellent for how young he is. I think he's another one of those. What was he? Seventeen? I think he's another one of the one of the gems we found. Swansea fans just replied to my tweet saying, "You've been much better than us. Not sure how we're winning," which is very very true. It's the old firm tomorrow, isn't it? That'd be a decent game. Where do, where do people stand that are in a, on the old firm? Are we Celtic or are we Rangers? I'm Rangers because of family. So hopefully uh, hopefully we win. Because it, it's probably the best chance we've had in a while. He'll be our next breakout star player. He could be. He could be. Could be. Hopefully. Hopefully he's the next. He's the next one. He's the next little gem. I have no idea how we're not winning this game. Oh, what a finish! Yeah, the third goal from Sunderland's a 
Great goal from Equa. Cuts in on his left foot, sort of 20, 25 yards out. Sticks the bottom corner. Very, very nice finish. Well, hopefully we see some better refereeing in this second half because um, it's been pretty dismal so far. I mean, I don't know how Kyle Norton's still on the pitch. I've got to be honest. It was a very dodgy tackle from him on uh, on Wells. No doubt we'll end up with a uh, another letter from the from the uh, EFA at some point, apologising for the standard of refereeing, which unfortunately doesn't give us the points back. What are we saying then? Do we think we're gonna come back? I think I think we gotta get a draw. I think we'll equalise early on in the second half after like 50, 55 minutes. I think we'll push for the winner. I don't think we'll find it, unfortunately. Best signing we've made this window. Um, hard to say, really, isn't it? Because we haven't seen a lot of most of them. I'd say Knight. I, I'd like, I really like Jason Knight. I think he's really, really good. Um. And I think there's still probably a lot more to come from him as well once we've got better players playing around him. The thought of Jason Knight feeding it into Tommy Conway is is a good one. I'm happy with that. I like that a lot. Um, it's just a case of getting to the point where we've got the players we want around him around him. Uh, Dickie, I'm, I mean, the two times I've watched him play now in person, I'm not a fan. He just looks very uncomfortable on the ball. And I get he's playing on the wrong side of the fence. Well, he wasn't on Tuesday, actually. Um, in terms of being right-footed and playing on the left side because he's next to Viner. But, yeah, Dicky, I'm not a huge fan of yet, but I'm sure he will improve with time, hopefully. Uh, McCrory, obviously, we haven't seen any of um, because of the weird bacterial infection thing. And then Taylor Gardner-Hickman, he's done well here so far, to be fair to him, uh, at right-back, but that's all we've really got to go off because... Cameo against Hull, I mean, I wasn't watching the game, so it's hard to, hard to say on that one, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we've got second half ahead of us. What are, what are people's predictions? I'm I'm going to go I'm gonna go 2-1 City. I, I think maybe maybe we find the winner. And the players are just coming back out now for the second half. Doesn't look like there's any changes. James still come back out for the second half, which is good. Stick to my prediction with one all. Makes sense. Makes sense. So substitution for Swansea. Harrison yes. Ashby coming on. I didn't see who's coming off. Just plug the uh, phone in a second. There we go. Right, we are at least attacking our fans. Well, not attacking our fans. Attacking towards our fans. Uh, in this second half, which is good. Hopefully that gives us a little extra boost that maybe we needed in that first half just to actually finish off the uh, finish off the move at points, I guess. Oh, there we go. Need to drop the camera. Let's not do that. There we go. Try to put, put, try to put it on charge and nearly dropped it. Never a good sign. There we go. I think we're back to being balanced now. Right. 
Second half's kicked off. We're passing it around the back nicely. O'Leary got the ball in our in our own box here. And it looks like he's going to go long into the midfield. A really nice ball, actually. Controlled really well by Williams. Goes back to Naismith. He's just kind of out on the left-ish. Looks to switch it towards Sykes, who doesn't win the header up against Key. And uh, Chaston Knight tries to knock it down, but to no, to no avail. He won the header, but there just wasn't anybody there in the end to receive it, unfortunately. Wells, I mean, that was questionable. So we've started okay, second half so far, first first minute or so. 4 0 to Sunderland, Jesus wept. That is, um, that's that's a shock result, I'd say. I mean, Sunderland have been good so far this season, haven't they? But not, not as good as Southampton have been. Um, that is ahead of a, ahead of a result for them. Fair play. When do we do we play Sunderland or Southampton? Southampton, I think we've got them away first, haven't we? On that like Wednesday night or something. Sunderland finally getting their season started. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean they've been they've been okay, haven't they? I don't think they've been. They got they must have had a win or two. That was handball, surely. No? Okay, brilliant. The ref's been shocking today. I appreciate that's normally the case in the championship, unfortunately, but. He has been very, very poor. Excuse Managed to drop the camera again. Sorry about that one. That's not ideal. But we're in here. Sykes down the right hand side. Cuts in. Yes! Brilliant goal there from Mark Sykes. I told you. I told you. Early equaliser. And we've got it after just two minutes. Brilliant ball out to Sykes on the left. Uh, right, sorry. And he cuts in. Sells, sells the defender a dream. And it's a lovely finish from his left foot into the bottom corner. And we are back level in South Wales. Not sure who played the ball out to him, but it was a really nice ball. And then, yeah, it just cuts inside. The defender goes flying and shifts it into the bottom corner with a lovely finish. That is beautiful. That is just what we needed to, to get the equaliser early. And, um, and hopefully now we kick on from here. Because to get back, like, Swansea aren't going to be able to just pass it around. Well, I mean, they can if they want to draw, I suppose. Um, pass it around the back. So they're going to have to get at us a little bit more if they if they want to kick on and get attempt to get the win. So we need to be wary of that as well because they haven't really done that other than the goal, which came after, what, six, seven minutes or so. Um, so we need to be wary of their threat as well. But hopefully that's the that's the pickup we needed. And we can, we can get at them. And that's a silly foul from Prune. It's just no need. The um, Swansea's two home games in the league so far have finished one all. So, if this was a third one all, then uh, uh, be a weird, weird coincidence, I suppose. Isn't it? They haven't lost at home. I mean, they haven't won yet this season, other than the the win over Northampton in the cup. Okay, well they've they've come at us and had a shot already. It's a decent save from O'Leary. It was kind of it was kind of straight at him, but not weak enough for him to catch. Um, but he kind of had to go down low and sort of. Scoop it away almost, but we're looking to get at them now again on the counter. Sykes oh, tried to play it across to Bell, but it was just behind him, unfortunately. A nice, a nice ball, like right idea. It's just a couple of couple of feet behind Bell. And the next 40 minutes left of this game, hopefully we continue the uh, the tempo that we've been playing at for the for the first 50. Been good. City fans finally able to hear them. Um, don't know if it's just because there wasn't really a whole lot to shout about, or if the microphone wasn't picking it up on Robin's TV, but didn't hear us much in the first half. Didn't really hear Swansea fans either, to be fair. 
Um, so I suspect that the microphone just wasn't picking out very well. But Swansea now with a free kick off the back of a, a, a foul from uh, from Matty James. Sort of, uh, how far away is a free kick? So just inside that, just inside our half. But they've loaded the box with uh, with players. Matt Grimes stood over it. It's kind of central right-ish, I guess. The ball comes in. It's deep and headed away by Jason Knight, I think, who's gone down. Oh, no, sorry, Jay Williams was the one to head it away in the end. Um, but it looks like he was fouled there by somebody. Not entirely sure. There were a lot. There was a lot of bodies in the box there. It's quite hard to work out what was actually going on. O'Leary now to take the free kick. Goes short to Viner. Viner! Obviously signing that new deal last night. And uh, hopefully to keep him here for the next three years. Or at the very least, if he leaves in the next three years, at least we know we're getting some money for him. Which is kind of the key thing, I suppose. Because he could have gone on a free uh, at the end of this season. Had he not signed the new deal, because his deal was set to expire. And with a rumoured interest from Swansea, I believe, actually, last week. Um, which didn't come to anything concrete in the end, from what I understand at least. Well, obviously he didn't leave, but I don't know if they ever put in a bid. Um, it would be convenient if he would go and score a winner today. Unfortunately, that may not be the case. But long ball there from uh, from City, looking for Wells in behind, who didn't quite win the race to it against, uh, against Rushworth. Thoughts on the transfer window in general? It was okay. I'm probably going to put a video out in the next couple of days. Uh, detailing my thoughts a little bit more but overall um, probably a s 6 out of 10 I guess strengthened strengthened well I think before we sold Scott I'd have said 8 out of 10 but then because we sold Scott and we weren't allowed to replace him um, or even attempt to I guess um, we we nearly went through there again, by the way, and Sykes, I, I'd say that was probably a foul, but the rest given nothing. Um, I'd say, yeah, the transfer window was all right on it. It's frustrating that we weren't able to use any of the Alex Scott money, other than on a loan for Garden Hickman, I guess. Because um, that's the thing Pearson's been saying throughout, is like, you've got to remember, loans aren't free. Like, we've got to pay some of his wages, probably most of his wages. There's be a loan fee, we've obviously got the option to buy at the end of it. Um which I think is around 1.3 million. So that's factored into the cost of the loan as well. So it's not like... And he's, he's a good player as well. So I'm happy with the Garden Hickman signing. It's just annoying because I think we are still short of a defender, a goalkeeper, and definitely a centre-forward. I th I'd, I'd have said we needed a centre-forward before we before Conway got injured, but definitely need one at the moment. But unfortunately, the deadline is shut. Well, the deadline has passed, rather, and the window is shut. So we cannot get said striker. But we are away down the left-hand side through Sam Bell. He's got Wells in support in the middle, who has been caught up with by defenders now. And it's kind of fizzled out a little bit. Yeah, there was there was a nice gap there for Bell to play the ball. And he didn't, he didn't take it, unfortunately. And we've gone all the way back. City fans in fine voice there with the eight men out of dream song. 54 minutes passed. And that equaliser has sparked Swansea into life a little bit. They've come at us a bit more since that happened. And Prigg now down the left-hand side controls it brilliantly on his chest. And it's cut across and it's over the bar. Oh, brilliant defending from Nathan Wood. And that was a decent chance there. Pring got away down the left-hand side, brought it down excellently on his chest. And uh, got the cross in for Wells. Who... Yeah, pokes it towards goal and Nathan Wood with a brilliant sliding tackle to um, get the block in that takes it over the bar. Garden Hickman now to take the corner on the right-hand side. Got to be an outswinger on his right foot from the looks of it. It's not the best of balls. Naismith goes to get there at the near post, but it's headed away for a corner yet again. Uh, we don't really have anybody big to aim for, do we, from these? It's kind of like well, Williams and Naismith, but they're not like giants. I miss having, oh, basically, I miss having Aidan Flint. One of my thoughts was to get Jamal Lowe in on loan for striker option. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, it's bobbling around. That's got to be a penalty. What's up? <laughs> this ref's had an absolute shocker. Absolute shocker. Stream kink? You mean stream link, mate? 
But um, it's on. <laughs> it's on Robin's TV. I'm just about to pay a tenner to watch it. Um, because they because it's like an early kick off. I think they're, they're putting it on in the UK. I don't really know what the rules are around it all. Um. Got those pens last year, so our weight will be doubled. Yeah. Eh. It probably would have been a little bit soft. I've just seen it back. Maybe slightly soft, but you definitely seem given. Um, I wouldn't say it's like stonewall penalty. There's probably a decision there to be made. But the ref has the final say. Like, okay, that's a foul. I'm not sure... Okay, somebody's getting booked again now for Swansea. There have been some dodgy, dodgy tackles from Swansea. I think it was Knight picked up the ball there in the in the middle and just got pulled back as soon as he... He kind of had to flick it away from uh, from Gillily. And he just gets pulled back straight away and Gillily's been booked now. Following, <sighs> following that tackle. We've got a decent a decent opportunity here from this free kick potentially. Garden Hitman's gotta take it out sort of towards the right hand side. Knight having a uh, sorry, James having a bit of a word with the ref there. Ref looks a little bit like Ray Parler. Um weird observation, but there you go. I mean again we've Naismith and Vino are picked up by the, the other two centre halves. It's kind of like who are we actually meant to aim for here? And it's been it's been flicked away. And out for a city throw in. Who's going to take this one? Prune's going to come across and take it out on the left hand side. We've 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 definitely been come out and continued to be the better side, which is good. Um, so that's something because my concern was we want to come out not equalise early, which obviously we did in the end after about two minutes, which was really very really good because that obviously kicks us on then and put Swansea on the back foot. But my concern was we were gonna come out, not be able to break them down. Yes! 2-1, Sam Bell. What a goal. Mark Sykes spins his man, gets down the right hand side, fires it across to the far post where Sam Bell knocks it in and we go 2-1 up here after 58 minutes in South Wales. Sam Bell loves a goal at Swansea. I told you this earlier. He absolutely loves it. And he's gone and stood on the billboard, giving it a big one to the City fans. What a boy. Mark Sykes, unplayable in this first 15... Well, good in the first half. Absolutely in, incredible in the second half so far. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. I wish I was there, I've got to be honest. But um, I ain't going to complain. This is wonderful. This is what we need. We needed a, we needed a, a result and a performance like this where we've just been brilliant so far, especially in this first 15 minutes of the second half. Absolutely immense. And hopefully it continues. If we could go and get another one or two, imagine that, like, that's a... I'm, don't get me wrong, we can stop at 2-1 and I'm more than happy. But if we could get a third or a fourth, that would be immense. But let's focus more so on not conceding, because Swansea now have no choice but to come at us a bit, because... Obviously, they came at us a little bit more at one all, but now they've got to come at us properly because um, they're not going to want to lose. Uh, obviously, having a pretty poor start to the season so far. Anyway, you don't want to go into the international break having not won a game, but you definitely don't want to go into it off the back of a loss. Sykes having a very good game here, goal and assist. That is very true. And my live stream's just cut out because Robin's TV is good like that. And we're back. Okay, that was a bit weird. Is it actually back? Yeah, okay. Sam Bell, what a man. So, so very true. What a guy. Lovely, lovely goal. He's been excellent in this game. Oh, ref. Swansea are losing their heads there a bit. They're just slowly just giving away silly fouls and just kicking us, basically. The national anthem rings out from the City fans in the away end. I think one and a half, two thousand or so over there. Obviously sold out, whatever the allocation was. I can't remember what it was. There was around 1,700, I believe. Oh, that's a brilliant take from... That's... Ref, maybe? Yeah. Good tackle, fair enough. 
Wells looked like he had got in behind, I think it was Cabango, but uh, good defending in the end to recover it and put it out for a corner. Looked like it maybe could have been a penalty shout, but nobody looked overly fast. That was hard to tell from the Robbins TV angle. Now we've got a corner again here. Hopefully we can uh, we can do something with this one. Gardner Hickman out on the right hand side to take it again. Looks like a little bit of a different setup. We've got a couple of people hovering on the edge of the box. Sykes maybe looking to go short perhaps, no? Okay, maybe not. Ball comes in, everybody jumps, Byner's there. Oh, that's just over the bar. It's gotta be a goal kick to uh, Swansea. Sam Bow is indeed one of our own. Probably one of my favourite City players at the moment, to be honest. I love it, love it. I love the um, the amount of success we have out of our academy. It's incredible. Thoughts on new Viner contract? Very, very good. Very good. Um, I, just, I spoke about it earlier on in the stream. Very good to get him tied down for another, well, at least this season. Um, the, the main thing for me is um, that if he does leave next summer, we get a fee. Because... Obviously, we wouldn't have done if he hadn't uh, if he hadn't signed a new deal because his his contract was expiring at the end of the year, or at the end of the season. So yes, it's massive for us because um, even like I said, even if he goes at the end of this season, he's we at least get good money for him, and if he doesn't, we get to keep our probably our best player, um, alongside Scott, certainly our best player over the last eighteen months or so. Oh well, definitely last season. I suppose season before he had a lot of a lot of work to do. And the way he's turned it around is actually incredible, to be fair. Probably the best. I mean, I started watching us in, in the year this shirt, from actually the year we um, year we won the double. If you haven't seen my documentary on it, do check it out. It's pinned on the channel. Um, but anyway, I started watching us then, and I haven't seen a player turn around their, their time at City like that player has, because he was pretty dismal in um, that first full season under Pearson. Especially at Swansea, actually, I, I remember vividly being there, and I was actually sat in the home end because I had hospitality tickets through a friend of mine. I interviewed Lee Trundle that day, um, and Vino had an absolute shocker, and he's turned it around massively. So, absolutely love the bloke, love the um, and yeah, like I said, love the success we've had from our academy. Like even just in today's eleven, you've got Pring, Pring Wells, and uh, sorry, not not Wells, Pring Vino and Bell all coming through the academy. And O'Leary, of course. Uh, so O'Leary through the academy, possibly. I'm, I'm not actually sure on that one. Um, but yeah, very happy with the new Viner contract. Very, very happy. Swansea have a corner there now. 64 minutes on the clock. Well, 63 minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Matt Grimes to eventually lift this one in. I think. Help oh, Swansea are making some subs. Who have we got coming on? I'm not actually sure. Does it want to? Okay, yeah, so two, cha two changes for, for Swansea. Jerry Yates coming off, who hasn't troubled us too much. Usually usually, um, usually struggle against him. Or did last season when he was at Blackpool anyway. I remember he missed an absolute sitter for them at Ashton Gate uh, in that 2-0 win for us. I think it was 2-0 in the end, wasn't it? 2-1 two, two maybe. can't remember what the actual score was, but Kyle Norton's come off as well after he probably should have been sent for the end of the first half. For, uh, for Darling. I don't know who he is, but nice second name, I guess. Um, and the, uh, the ball's got to come in now, eventually, from Swansea with the corner. The ball comes in and it's cleared away by Naismith. Really, really solid defending there. And Swansea win the ball back there. That looks like they've got to try and come at us again. Long ball into the box. He's not dealt with it. It hits the post and hits O'Leary and is cleared away. By Sykes, that was far too close for comfort. Very uh, sort of lackadaisical defending from us. And O'Leary, luckily, in the right place as he slid back across his goal, um, knees first almost, to uh, to kind of scoop it away before Sykes just hoofs it out and O'Leary catches that next ball into the box fairly comfortably. It wasn't really a high one, it was kind of pinged in at like chest height. And, uh, and bowls through. They've got the replay here. It's headed back across and, and Naismith caught out and Viner 
Uh, sorry, O'Leary. Luckily, with a good save off the post. Not sure who it is that gets the shot off. Cabango, perhaps. And uh, and yeah, O'Leary. Luckily, right place, right time to uh, to get a left hand on it, scoop it away. And Jason Knight now picks up the ball, battling against Grimes. Does really well, actually. Brilliant. Oh, ref, come on, man. There's nothing in that. It's literally, Jason Knight's just gone shoulder to shoulder with that darling bloke who just came on. And um, and the ref's just given a foul like, instantly. It's ridiculous. Promotion bus is back on the road. It is. It is. The wheels came off for a week or two. <sighs> Excuse me. Wheels came off for a week or two. We are well and truly back. And we, we, we have looked very good in this game. I appreciate Swansea have had a pretty poor start to the season. But this is the sort of performance that we needed. We needed we had the good performance against Hull, but didn't get the result. Um, Tuesday was just generally poor, and so was Birmingham. So we just needed we needed that. We needed a win. And hopefully we can hold on for another 24 minutes here and get said win. You know, I don't want to speak too soon. I don't want to jinx it, because we've all been there before. Sunderland at home a few years ago, most notably. Um, but even like Nottingham Forest in uh, the 21-22 season at home, 1-0 up in what, the 91st minute? Lost 2-1. That was an impressive night. But um, Swansea just controlling the ball at the moment in our half. Could do with forcing them back a bit because, you know, the, the, the more tired we get, we haven't made any subs yet, so... <sighs> the more tired we get, the more tired I get. But... Um, I wouldn't mind seeing your bow come on soon, but it's kind of who do you take off? Sykes and Bow obviously scoring the goals. Been very, very good. Maybe give it another five minutes and probably take one of them off. Oh, what a challenge. Brilliant, brilliant tackle there from Cameron Pro. A lovely little deft ball in from um in from Swansea down the left hand side. Or well our left hand side. And Pring Oh sorry, it wasn't Pring, it was Garden Hickman. My apologies. But it makes a brilliant tackle. TGH has been brilliant, he has been very, very good. Big fan of him. And speaking of which, he's about to come off for George Tanner. But um, literally right as I read that message out, Tanner appeared and the ref held up the 22. But yeah, very solid debut from uh, from Garden Hickman. Well, full debut at least. But he's, he's not really an unknown entity, I suppose. Nor, nor any of these signings that we've made. You know, Normally we've got like the the one who's coming from somewhere abroad who we don't really know anything about. But all of, all of the signings we've made this year, which I like, have been like, I suppose J Jason Knight's not played too much in the championship, but he played for a bit before they got relegated. Um, but like Dickey, McCrory's probably the unknown, I suppose. Um, but Roberts, Dickey, Knight, uh, Garden Hickman, like we kind of know what we're getting to a degree. Um, Dickey, obviously, off the back of that poor campaign last year, hasn't really had the best of starts for us so far with the red card and a couple of dodgy performances from the squad as a whole. You know, I, Other than the red card, he hasn't made... I can recall at least, like an individual error that's led to any major issues. Um, but yeah, that red card at Birmingham was frustrating and very silly. Jason Knight battles so well, I love it. Would I prefer Naismith in defence or midfield? I do like him in midfield, I prefer him in midfield. But the caveat to that is that you then have to start Dickey, um, who, as I've just said, I'm not a huge fan of personally. Um, but yeah, Naismith, I'd rather be starting in midfield. But Williams has been excellent in that role today. So it's kind of a, a toss up, I suppose. Oh, excuse me, I need to stop yawning. But, um, but yeah, I would prefer to have Naismith in, in midfield because I like the way he controls that, that role and links our defence into our midfield nicely without having to play too many long balls, etc. But I'm a lot more assured when we're playing it around our defence, when we've got Naismith there instead of Dickey. Atkinson and Viner, I like. That would be my preferred option. Um, Dickey, um, I was uncomfortable when he was passing it around the back uh, at points in the two times I've seen him in person, um, just because he didn't look confident. I appreciate he's playing on the wrong wrong side of the fence for a left foot, for a right footer. Um, how much that actually impacts it, I don't really know. I guess it does a bit, because you, you, you didn't actually receive the ball on the wrong foot, I suppose playing on the left side of the fence as a right-footed player, but should it make too much difference? Probably not. Ultimately, a professional footballer should be able to deal with that and still look more than confident, I guess. But, but yeah, I, I would prefer him in midfield, but I like him in either role, really. 
and uh, yeah, we've been we've been we've been solid there. There's 20 minutes left on the clock. Not a lot's really going on. Uh, Williams now looking to advance. Sam Bell making a brilliant run down the left hand side. He is certainly not showing any signs of tiredness. Ah, that's frustrating. Cabango intercepted the ball after a heavy touch from Bell, and then just kind of got in front of him and and went to ground up at the first sign of any contact from Bell, and the refs fell for it as it, as he has all game. 19 minutes left on the clock to uh, hopefully hang on and get a massive 2 1 win. Swansea just passing it around the back nice and calmly, really. There is nothing going on in this game at the moment, I've got to be honest. Like, there have been no chances for the five minutes or so, just kind of. Swansea looking to try and break us down and we've been fairly solid, fairly resolute thus far. Hopefully that continues for the next 20 minutes or so. Swansea, Grimes has been given a bit too much space in midfield here. Knight not really dropping back as much as he probably should have done there. The ball comes into the box now and it's over hit and Bell picks it up on the, on the far side and is forced backwards but wins a nice throw in there. Very well done. Just absolutely smashes it into the Swansea defender. <sighs> Excuse me. And, um, and, yeah, win to the throne. And, yeah, just relieves that pressure again, which is good. Paul goes long towards Wales, is cut out. Once again, though, by the Swansea defender. I don't understand why we keep playing these long balls at points, because, I'm not being funny, Wells is quite small. Um, and centre arse tend to be quite tall. So it doesn't really make much sense, does it? When you look at it at just a basic level like that. And it certainly doesn't work. Swansea now out wide, looking to, looking to find the opening. Bring Stan... <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> He did stand the defender up well, the attacker up well, and then he just absolutely, he literally just shoved him with two hands in the shoulder, and the rest given nothing. So I mean, I'll say that. I don't, if of all the decisions the refs made this this game, that was the one that should have been a foul, um, or the most obvious one, along with the Kyle Norton one that should have been a red card. Um, Prings literally just like two handed shoved him. Not quite sure why the ref hasn't given that, but we won't complain. We've won the goal kick from it. And uh, O'Leary now got to look to reset us. Weiner goes long and it just goes out for a throw in. Nothing there. Oh man, <laughs> nothing coming of that one. You could tell the game's gone dull again because I'm nearly falling asleep. But, um, yeah, it's been kind of 10 minutes now of just not a lot really going on. Thoughts on Hayden Roberts net from Yaboa? Um, Roberts looks looks good. Not really seen a whole lot of him yet. Uh, Yaboa I like, but when he's not ready to start, I wouldn't say. There were people, probably including myself, to be fair, at points, thinking about whether or not he should start this, this game. Um... But I think it's probably it was probably the right decision not to throw him in just yet. Uh, I'd like to see him come on though. I think he probably will in the next five minutes or so. I think we'll probably make one or two more changes just because we are starting to starting to tire and a Swansea push for that push for that equaliser. And it wouldn't surprise me if Jamie Patterson comes on soon uh, as well. Then we could do without. I, th I think Jamie Patterson might have already come on actually saying that. Um, I believe he might be there. We're number twelve. Anyway. Uh, yeah, your bow I like. Roberts is decent, I think, but hard to. When you've got Pring, it's kind of hard to give Roberts that much game time because Pring is so solid. He is on. I thought he was, but I just missed him. Missed him coming on. I think. Yeah, literally as soon as I said it, I saw somebody who looked a lot like Jamie Patterson um, stood in the midfield. Yeah, there he is. I love Jamie Patterson. I miss him, but I wouldn't take him back either. <laughs> I just want to go back to like 2018-19 when we were good. Those were the days. 
Jeju, Patterson, Eliasson, all firing. Take me back. We're in it. Naki up, never mind, he's offside. As always, seemingly. Let's not forget, we've also had three goals disallowed in this game. Like, we have been electric on the attack. Um, and fairly resolute defensively. This is this is definitely the best performance I've seen us have this season. Um, and to be fair, for quite a while, because towards the back end of last season, we weren't exactly brilliant uh, at points. Um, so, yeah, very happy with this so far. Th 14 minutes left. Hopefully, it carries on. And uh, we see see where we go from here. But Swansea just continues to pass it around the back. They haven't really... They had the first sort of 10 minutes or so after we went in front where they were pushing at us. But since then, the last sort of 5-10 minutes, they've um, not really pushed much. Does Pearson's contract end this season? It does. It does. It ends at the end of the year. Well, end of the season, yeah. So I think he'll probably leave after that. I'd be surprised if it got extended. Um, I think he'll probably retire, to be honest. I think this was this was when he took it as a three-year contract with a clear sort of plan to it. I think it, he probably looked at it and went, this is probably my last job. Um, equally, if he extended past this season, I'd, I'd be more than happy. Um, I think Cornick, well, Cornick's about to come on now for, for Wells. But I think if, if Pearson was able to... I'd be interested to see what we could do with Pearson next summer on the basis we're allowed to spend a good amount of the Alex Scott money. Because I think Pearson's, Pearson's recruitment on the whole has been very good. Um, Cornick, Mometti. Mometti less so. Cornick's probably the, the weird one out of that. Mometti's been decent, but very young, very raw. Um, so I'd be interested to see if Pearson did extend what we could do next summer. I think we could build a very solid side. But equally, it'd be nice, maybe, to have that money and somebody with some new ideas and stuff. Um, but yeah, his contract, ultimately, yes, his contract expires at the end of the season. I think we probably end up with a new manager for next year, but I don't think Pearson gets sacked at any point. No, I just give him the money that I trust him completely. I agree. But the issue is I don't think they want to give anybody the money at the moment. Um, which obviously, to a degree, does make sense. Because when we got the Webster money and the Kelly money and the Brian money and the Reed money, etc. Um, we didn't exactly do wonderful things with it, did we? Um, you know, obviously that was down to Mark Ashton. But I get that Lansdowne's thought process is he does, you, can, you know, you can only, for, for a natural fair play, you can only spend X amount and make X amount and whatever you, and I don't know how close are we are to those limits, um, nor do any of us, really, until any account, until accounts get published at the end of each year and things like that, but um, who would be my ideal Pearson replacement? I really know. Pep Guardiola? <laughs> uh yeah, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. Top of my head. But if, like I said, if Pearson extends and gets given the money, I'd have no problem with that. Well, even if Pearson extends and doesn't get given the money, I'd have no problem with that. Um, from a Pearson point of view, I have an issue with him not being given money to spend. As I think he would as well, because you can tell in, in presses at the moment he's becoming more and more... I think he's probably glad the window's shut. <laughs> Pep does love a cider. But um, Harry Cornick on time to win the league. Never agreed with a sentence more. Uh, ideal Pearson replacement. I don't know. Leave some leave some suggestions in the in the in the chat. I do like I do like Michael Duffy at Swansea. Um, Will I want him? Maybe. I suppose. But I don't know. Mine mine. I don't know. Bring Lee Johnson back. <laughs> don't do that. Please don't do that, City. I love Lee Johnson, but I think he's a little bit past it now, as we've probably seen since he left us. But Swansea now on the attack, on the edge of our box. L nothing's happened in the last five minutes or so, hence why I've been waffling on about Nigel Pearson. Cabango up on the edge of the box. Patterson turns, shoots, and it's wide. 
young, excited manager who plays good football agree? Who them is the is the question? Who because those are the most in demand people in football. Slav and Bilic, no thank you, no thank you. No, thank you. I don't think that's the sort of appointment we'd make either, um, for what it's worth. Rob Dickey's about to come on. Uh, it doesn't look like the bow is coming on. Get Cornick on for the long throws. Bell volleys it in for 3-1, imagine. That'd be nice. Uh, that's a silly foul there from Sykes. Nine minutes left on the clock. If you have enjoyed the stream, obviously we'll continue until full time, but make sure you leave a like, subscribe, etc. Share it around. Well, if Cornick is sacked, Carrick is sacked by Burrow, we could try him. I would love that. That would be great. Um, what you've got to rely on, though, is him, A, getting sacked, B, not finding a job until the end of the season. Uh, but, yeah, I do like Carrick. That was a possibly handball there from Naismith. Swansea bobbling around the box, and it's headed away. Got away, sorry. Eventually. What are the uh, what are the scores on the doors in the other games as well, by the way? Last I heard it was 4-0 Sunderland, 1-0 Millwall, and 2-1 to uh, Sheffield United. Graham Potter. That would be nice. That would be nice. I feel bad for Graham Potter. Because, like, that move to Chelsea was never going to work very well, was it? Oh, 2 all ever. Who scored the equaliser? Danny Juma. Fair play. One all Bowman and Millwall. Was that Sunderland or still 4 0? Yeah. Fair enough. That's a um, massive result, isn't it, for Sunderland? Fair play. Fair play. Here's a debate. VAR in the Championship. What will we? What? What? What are the thoughts? I think. I think it should happen at some point because the referees are useless, quite frankly. Um, and I appreciate VAR brings its other issues. Yeah, I. I don't want Scott Parker. Thanks. Uh, that's not for me. Sykes off, Dickey on, um, I guess Naismith moving into midfield, I suppose, or we move, or we move into the three at the back. Naismith into midfield makes more sense though, doesn't it? Um, it's basically just a, we've got six minutes left, we need to hold on to a lead, sort of change. Hopefully Rob Dickey will help us do that, especially with set pieces and things like that. Just get them away. It looks like we're sticking with the... looks like we're going for sort of a 5-3-2 type system. Naismith, Naismith Dickey, Viner as a, as a three at the back. Uh, obviously with um, Tanner and Pring as wing-backs. And then Cornick and, uh, and Bell up top. With Williams, James and Knight knocking around in the midfield. Love Stephen Schumacher, but that's not going to happen. Stephen Schumacher will be good, but yeah, don't see him leaving Plymouth anytime soon. Um, because they're doing pretty well so far, aren't they? So yeah, I'd be I'd be surprised if he uh, if he left Fulham. We could be in here. Cornick has got all stuck under his feet and has to lay it into Pring out on the left, who shoots. Oh, Cameron Pring nearly scored a screamer. I got to look at the Rovers' statement on Clark Harris. I haven't yet. I saw that it didn't get it didn't get done in time. Um, I'll be honest. I fell asleep before the deadline last night. I was watching the Sky and then just fell asleep in the end. So I kind of missed the last little bits, like Greenwood being announced at Getafe, um, which is interesting, to say the least. Um, but no, I haven't seen the statement. What actually happened? I just saw some journalist tweet this morning or, or late last night that the paperwork didn't get done in time, so that it didn't go through. But it doesn't surprise me that they've managed to mess it up. Because, well, it's them, isn't it? It's funny. Back three usually doesn't end end up well for us. I'm a bit nervous about it now. Yeah, we got five minutes. I think I think it's it's purely just to... D 
deal with long balls and things like that, which Swansea are going to try and just... It's just to make us as difficult as possible to try and break down. Um, long term, I agree. I don't like back, the back three at all as a as a system from the start of a game. It's a good save there from O'Leary. Um, but for like five minutes here, when they will be pushing for the equaliser, I think it makes perfect sense to go to the back three. Who would have been my ideal striker to bring in? Mbappe. Um, no, realistically. Uh, Cameron Archer would have been good, but probably a little bit out of reach, um, considering he's ended up at Sheffield United in the Premier League. Um, other than that, off the top of my head, I don't have like a list of names. Uh, Jay Stansfield I liked. When he was at Exeter, he's obviously gone to Birmingham now and, and started well. Um, that would have, have been a good one. Young, exciting. Uh, but the the thing is, once Conway's back, we've got that we've got that striker, we've got that like Jay Stansfield type striker, Kiefer Moore. Are you no, <laughs> no thank you, no thank you. Um, would have liked Jerry Yates. That'd have been a good one to be fair. We need a Kiefer Moore type player. I think someone someone like Chris Martin, like a Jeju, hold the ball up sort of player. Um, but not in the form of Kiefer Moore. Basically, is what I'd go with on that one. Um. Three minutes left, still 2-1. We've got a free kick in our half, but Vine has got a take out on the right-hand side. And it goes long, down the line towards Cornick, who doesn't quite control it. Tries to keep it in and loses, well, loses out and gives Swansea a throw-in, but like right by the right by the byline um, of their own half, which is good. So that, that's what we've got to do there for two and a half minutes, and then injury time is just keep Swansea pinned in their own half. And uh, whether or not we can do that, who knows? They've, they've launched it long. Dickie's fallen over. Somebody needs to come and win this. Okay, that was um, shaky. O'Leary came rushing out from his goal and it kind of took a bit of a weird bounce and he had to, had to volley it away in the end. Ball goes long now. Cabango heads it away. Cornick looking to shut down the, uh, the the pass, but didn't quite get there in time. Swansea now go long again. Tanner cuts it out nicely. This is nervy now. For the next two minutes, it's just got to be Swansea just sticking long balls up at us. Pring deals with that one really well. And Naismith comes through and sweeps up and plays it down the line for Jason Knight, who goes into a 50-50 and, and loses out to uh, Ben Cabango. That was a nice ball there from Patterson out wide to uh, Ginnelly for Swansea. And we've just got, I'm just praying that we can hold on here. That's why I'm not talking too much. I just really, really desperately needed us to keep up with this. And uh, Vine has just been hit where no man wants to be hit with the football um, from across. From very, very nearby. <laughs> Poor bloke is feeling that one. But uh, Swansea calling now. One minute left of, of normal time. Just need to hold on. It doesn't don't say too all to me. Please. It's still two one as far as I'm concerned. No, they haven't if they're about to score, they haven't scored on my stream, on the Robins TV stream. Um I've got my phone on Do Not Disturb so that I don't see like Twitter notifications and stuff telling me what happens before it pops up on the stream. Uh Patterson's been booked for a challenge on Pring. Still two one, alright, good. I'm, I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah, Pring caught in the face there with a high boot from uh, from Patterson. No notification of... Alright, cool. We're good. We're good. It's still 2-1. Six minutes of injury time. Oh, God. I don't like this. I don't like this. Dicky goes long from the free kick in search of Cornick. He doesn't win the header. Patson with a nice ball into Grimes. And the ball, uh, Viner, what was that? Good header away there. Cornick 
call it doing brilliantly there with some press and trying to force Swansea back. Really, really good there from Cornick. He's been he's been good since he came on. To be fair, he came on basically with that with that role in mind of just pressing them and getting fresh legs at them to try and force them back where possible. And he's doing just that there and tried to win us a corner there, but ends up in a goal kick. Tried to put he put in a challenge right on the byline, trying to like clip it back off the Swansea player, and it just ended up going out. But five minutes left now. Come on, see. This will be an absolutely huge win going into the international break. Give us that two weeks where I think Jason Knight's the only one who's been been called up for uh, international duty that I'm aware of anyway. I think uh, Pearson said Bell was on verge, on the verge, sorry, of going for the England under-20s or under-21s or something. And that's a bit dodgy and it's good goalkeeping from Max. The ball came in from Swansea. It was headed back across goal and... Uh, Naismith and the Swansea attacker got stuck under the ball almost and Max kind of came out on top and, uh, and claimed it with four and a half minutes left to play. But yeah, it gives if we win here, it gives us that that feel-good factor going into the international break. We come back, we got three games in a week against West Brom, Plymouth and Leicester. So three tough games, but two of them at home where hopefully we can get our first home win of the season against probably more likely to be against West Brom, isn't it, I suppose? Um, would be ideal, certainly to, to have the, the, the mood, the good mood around the camp for the next couple of weeks, training and stuff during the international break, and on like social media and things like that, because the players, the players are bound to see stuff, um, as are the club and what have you, if everybody's in a negative mood, you know, it naturally doesn't help, ultimately. Um, so yeah, a win here would be huge. And Joe Williams, oh, that's a lovely ball. Flicks it over the defender, and we're going to try and take it to the corner, and that's a foul, surely. Yeah, win the free kick here in the corner, three and a half minutes left, and it looks like our plan is just see this out, sat in the corner of the pitch, in the uh, camps out in the Swansea half, and hopefully, hopefully get this over the line. Joe Williams has been exceptional today. I mean, to be fair, nobody's actually put a foot wrong really. I don't know Naismith a little bit questionable for their goal. Um, I don't want to speak too soon. Stop putting these 2-2s two in here. 5-0 Sunderland. Jesus wept. Jesus, that's, um, that's mad. Fair play. Did Southampton, like, I know they sold Bella, Bella Kotchap, or wherever his name was. Show about McCrory being out for five months. Yeah, it's not ideal. Not ideal at all. Here we are, Jason Knight and uh, Sam Bell trying to battle in the corner for us. And somehow Swansea have won a free kick. I'm not entirely sure how. This ref's been <laughs> dire today. Absolutely horrific. But um, kind of come to expect it now. Two minutes and ten seconds left as Swansea look to build from the back through Wood. He's going out down the left now. Ginnelly on the ball up against Tanner. Forces them back into their own half where hopefully we can keep them for the next two minutes. 16-year-old has stored a Sunderland. Oh, dear. Well, I feel old. I feel old. Ep Premier Boa is like 18 months younger than me. I don't like it at all. Don't like it at all. Right, Swansea now. Coming at us. 90 seconds left on the clock. Ball comes in. Good save from O'Leary. The ball came, well, it was it was a cross, I think, but um, but ended up kind of like a shot, almost. It basically just went straight at O'Leary, but as a cross-type thing. It was very weird. It was like a Mameti cross, where they, they end up going over the bar. City fans in fine voice at the other end of the pitch, and uh, hopefully they can... Um, Help us over the line here for the next minute. Cornick now on the ball, looking to just drive at them. And he's driving towards the corner. And this is an excellent run from Harry Cornick. And he wins us a free kick. After getting tackled by Joe Allen. Joe Allen loves a, loves a foul against us. I've seen him get sent off twice against us. Yeah, that's brilliant there from Cornick. Just not giving up on the ball despite the tussle with Allen. And eventually going to ground once there was enough contact to do so. 
Um, well, enough contact. Maybe not really, but who cares? <laughs> We've got the free kick now, which nobody is really going up for. Uh, James has got to take it. I presume he'll just take this short into Jason Knight and we'll try and keep this in the corner. We've got 15 seconds left on the clock. Well, until the minimum of injury time's up, I suppose it might go over slightly. But it looks like we're going to get this over the line here. Tanner picks up out wide. A few seconds left. The national anthem rings out from the away end. And the referee blows his whistle for a goal kick, not a, not the end of the game. I say re-sign Eliasson. Well, no. I don't think that's really going to work, unfortunately. It's goal kick for Swansea. Six minutes and 20 seconds gone. And the ref blows for full time. And we have the win. 2-1 at the Swansea.com stadium. From behind, absolutely massive. That's a massive win. Sam Bell with yet another winner at the Swansea.com stadium, which is possibly the worst stadium name in England. And uh, I am absolutely buzzing with that. Thank you very much for watching the stream. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. I'll maybe put a match review or something out later on. Um, but yeah, that is a huge win, huge three points. And uh, hopefully, hopefully a sign of things to come. Absolutely massive performance. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And if I can work out how to turn this thing off, I will, uh, I will see you in the next one. Thank you, guys.